Hello there guys and gals, welcome back to part 3 out of 3 of the 100% Achievement Land Trophy Guide and full walkthrough for the Sinking City. Now in the last one, in the last video that we've done, we got all the way up to main mission 8 out of 9 and we've done the two side missions as well. And we're on to our third and final side mission, which has an achievement and trophy related to it. Which is called Silence is Golden for basically helping out Joy the Librarian. Now this is another short one before we get into the depths for the ninth and final mission. So this video is only going to be taking about an hour and 15 minutes long I believe. Of course it'll still be a little bit longer for you due to uh, loading times and cutscenes cut etc. But we are at the end. So the first things first then, obviously we've gone to Oakmont Library now to have a little chat with Joy. She's a bit of a weirdo and she's got her mouth stitched up and this is the mission. We actually figure out why. So we'll have a little chat with her first then. I'm scared. What do you mean? Yes. Her. What did she want? Keep my mouth. You said it. Yes. Do you know her? Yes. Then who is... Won't tell. Oh, come on. No. No. Don't worry. I'll help if I can. Here's Idris. I got this, Joy. Be careful. Bye, Joy. I mean, if there's any old people that tries to get on you or kill you, you know, there's every chance you'd be scared. So I'm with Joy on this one. But, like I said, she's too scared to give us anything, so she's just given us her key for her address. That's where we're going to go next. This one is one, uh, the shortest, I believe, of the side missions. We only go to a few places before we end up at the Granny's house. So don't worry for the time being, no enemies are going to attack you while you're in Joy's apartment, but the dead dog, which is extremely sad, your, if you go near it, this your sanity will drain quite quickly. Otherwise, this is just another area of key evidence searching and additional evidence searching for the time being. Ugh, someone's a real pro with a needle. Cancelled. But she was good enough to put on a show. Yes, life took a real turn for you. Huh, Joy. Huh. Joy won this in a singing con- Ah. Oh. Someone has real issues. This thing is melt. Christ Almighty! Is that a dog skin? Come to Granny, Papitia. 
stitch comes out, a stitch goes in. A... Kay, it's her. It's really her. Proof. Hope she doesn't hear me take the photo. Click, click. A visitor. Who's there? Someone visited Joy's place, killed her dog, and sewed it into this thing. A warning for her, I guess. And the neighbor just got in the way. Man, that is one messed up old biddy. The door won't bust. So don't do what I do here. I thought the um, door was open. We've actually got to go down into the basement where we will be attacked by some wild beasts. Again, as it has been throughout the game, the number and variants of beasts will appear. But obviously, again, just get your best gun ready. Don't use your machine gun ammo. We will be using that against Granny Weaver a little bit later on. So try and get as much machine gun ammo as you possibly can because that is the quickest thing that will take her down. So just use, you know, your pistols or whatever your best weapon is apart from your machine gun. Now the invisible lithium just hides around the corner at the top of the stairs, so we might do the same for you, but it might not. Just obviously be careful with that. But it is typical how I get a bloody in another invisi lithium. <sighs> Piss me off. But anyway, down here we're just getting a key. <laughs> there he goes, rolling down the stairs. Like he's had too much to drink. Nice. We've all been there though, pal, so don't worry about it. But we're grabbing a key now for the uh next. Joy's next door neighbor's apartment. We will be getting, again, a bit more evidence searching. Someone's a big fan of fairy tales, the kind without a happily ever after. No sign of any wounds, but he looks like he's seen the devil himself. Someone's a big fan of fairy tales. The kind of words ever after. So then, apparently a man named Arthur Cox had found Granny Weaver's lair, and oh look at that! A goddamn... A bloody lithium just decides to still come outside. A, a transporting lithium, no doubt. They normally don't go outside and follow you, but we did have a bit of help there from uh, an NPC, so cheers for that mucker. He transported elsewhere, so pff, we're good to go. But that can happen, apparently. That only happened to me once during the game. But anyway, like I say, saying, before I got rudely interrupted, thanks for that. There was a man named Arthur Cox who believed to have found... Granny Weaver's lair. So now we're just going back to the library to have a little chat with Joy, and then we'll be going to the house where uh, the address where the house is listed.
took a look around your apartment, Joy. It's not good. Dude? This... Don't... Oh. Dude... This is a... Well then, wasn't the chat just a whole bunch of waste of your time? And we've had enough waste of our time during our time here in Oakmont. But like I said, now we are going to Granny Weaver's house. We've got it done. And she is a boss fight. There's no other way around it. So when we get to the house, obviously we'll be doing a lot of key and additional evidence searching again, as obviously we have been doing. But it's when we place... Basically, the end, we've then got to grab two mirrors and place them where they were located in the sub-basement, and that is where Granny Weaver appears. No wild beasts in this area, it's literally just the searching and then it is the placing. Also, just to let you know, I won't be getting all of the evidence. I'm only grabbing the key evidence. Basically, there is a dagger which is down in the sub-basement, or the basement, I believe, which, once you pick it up, a whole bunch of wild beasts spawn, and I would have rather... Pref I, I wanted to save my ammo, to be honest, for the Granny Weaver fight, so... That's why you don't see me grabbing all of the evidence this time. Again, you're more than welcome to, if you want to have a look around, but I don't particularly for this area. There's good art, bad art, and then stuff which makes your skin crawl. <laughs> Looks like a shot took it out. Enough for a trench full of krauts. Kill her! Jack and Tank, kill her! Rock! This one is heavy! Let's figure out what happened here. Rock! This one is heavy! 
is heavy! Here we go! Who dares call me? Keep shooting! Kill her! Jack and Tank, kill her! Granny Weaver. They called her up, used two mirrors to do it, then... Oh, looks like it got violent. Right then, so all we've got to do now is just grab the two mirrors and put them in the place. Now, let me just quickly tell you about Granny Weaver then. So, when she shows up, she sort of appears as an old woman in fancy dress who floats around, around the room like a ghost. Her main attacks are similar to a lethian. She'll fire some strange projectile spit vomit at you. Um, they can occasionally go through walls. She can also do a sonic attack. That is a short range area effect attack. And Granny Weaver can also summon Stygians. Now, if you don't have any machine gun ammo, basically you can obviously grenade her, set some foot traps around for the Stygians uh, if she avoid, um, calls them out. Otherwise, it'll take six bullets to kill her from the rifle, about seven from the shotgun, 15 shots from the revolver or machine gun, and 30 from the handgun. Which is why I said, with a machine gun, 15 bullets, hopefully you've still got 15 bullets that are spare, so you can literally just mow her down, and the boss fight's over within 10 seconds. So go get that ready, but like I said, if not, you can use bullets, a grenade, etc, etc, but obviously... Keep, dod keep walking around the room, keep dodging, and trying to keep uh, dodging all the Stygians, etc. as well. But hopefully, machine gun, bam, good to go. So then, with the machine gun, that took three seconds. So it wasn't even ten seconds, that was three seconds with the machine gun, and that's why, I mean, well, Okay, I should have censored that bit, I'm teabagging her open gash wound on her neck. You've probably seen worse though, so that's fine. <laughs> I hope. Um, <laughs> but yeah, here we go, so it took three seconds. Teabag her open neck wound if you want, that's completely optional. I wouldn't advise to, in real life or in game, to be honest, but... But that's it. Now all we've got to do then is return to Joy, tell her she's good to go, and then... Into the Depths, the final mission of the game. Joy, you've no reason to be scared now. Sure? Absolutely. Thank Kay. Take this. You're safe now. I figured... All is well. I, I'm confused. Current punishment. Need to serve this and... How come? Sewing someone... You're not from... O okay. Okay. Bye. Huh. So after all that, then all we get is a uh, little bit of measly XP. No money, no bullets, no nothing? Yeah, well, screw you then. Anyway, who cares about that now? We've got our achievement. We don't care about the Stitch Mouth. You don't have to worry about her anymore, Mrs. Stitch. What we need to do then is we're going to start into the Depths mission. We've got to start by going back to the Devil's Reef Hotel. And depending on... Who you killed at the end of the last mission fleeing Phoenix, whether it was Asher Usher or Joseph Hill, you'll get a cutscene depending on obviously who you killed there. Thank you. 
Oh boy, we are really starting to lose our head now, aren't we? And it's only going to get worse as well, which is great. So again, I'm just uh, grabbing a few more lootables, etc. Because I'm out of machine gun ammo and I'm needing a bit more. Even though there's... I'd say there's probably about three portions of Wild Beast enemies left to do in this game. So it's not highly critical that you get all the ammo you can now. But we're just having a uh, look at a few things and basically our main objective we need to find three monoliths and the first one then will be at saint michael's church right in the middle of advent so not too difficult to start off with in fact to be honest the whole mission isn't that difficult anyway i'm watching you newcomer So then, apart from the obvious uh, key evidence, additional evidence searching we'll be doing here, there is a, you know, one of those weird religious nuts who thinks setting their, setting their self on fire is the way into heaven or whatever the hell these crazy cults believe. Basically, that is for an achievement. So she's turned up late to the party and there is one particular dialogue option we need to tell her so that she won't kill herself and that she goes on to live a actual fun-filled, prosperous life instead of this whole bloody religious cult crap, which is just, no offence, it's full of weirdos. I just don't believe in cults and stuff like that. Don't look at this burning altar for too long, by the way, because it'll start draining your sanity quite a bit. But as soon as we get up to Meryl upstairs, I will let you know the dialogue option which you're supposed to pick to not let her kill herself. Oh, in fact, you know what? Well, since we're here anyway, I might as well tell you now. Basically, you're going to go through a little bit of dialogue and eventually you'll be forced to select you want to burn yourself. If the dialogue option you have to choose then is you'll die in agony. That means she will not do it and you get the achievement. If you say don't do this or it's your choice, she'll kill herself anyway and you miss out on the achievement. So, again... If you're not listening to my ramblings, just look at this screen, <laughs> and it'll show you. You're a fire worshipper, yeah? Why do you ask? It's where I need to go. <gasps> it's you! What are you talking about? Hind gels would whisper to us. Also, you... Okay. Me? His notes are hidden downstairs. Are you planning to... It is the cleansing. Yeah. You might want to think about it. You'll scream and scream in pain as the fire burns your flesh. It would be a slow and awful way to die. I... well... yes. So 
So there we go then. Not sure why it's a rare achievement, if I'm honest. Um, obviously too many people are playing the game and not giving a crap. I don't know. But that's what we've got then. So we've only got a couple of achievements left to get now. So we've got the key. Now we're going to go down into the basement. And we're going to dispel an illusionary wall. And after we do that, a bunch of wild beasts, about three wild beasts, usually the encounter is the same. One Stygian, one Kokishan, and a teleporting Lethian. So it's usually the same, could be a different monster or two, but there's typically only three there to do. And then when you're in that room then, again, get the key evidence and a piece of the monolith is in there. So that's the first one already found. Lucid dreaming, dream wandering. Someone's been studying hard. Sleeping draft. This must be part of the seal. Looks like this was left for me. So that's the first part of the monolith out of three collected, found. The other two are in slightly annoying locations if I'm honest, but when we get outside now we'll do our little mind palace deductions and find out where the next one is. I mean, if I'm being real honest, the Mind Palace deductions, if you've got to choose something, they, they really don't matter. We've got three endings to do. You'll make a manual save before you pick your first ending. Go through all three of them. They're all, they're all quite manically depressing anyway, so really doesn't matter the, ad, um, the Mind Palace clues at this end mission. So next, we go into the Oakmont Chronicle link to decipher the first part of the instructions to find out where to go next. What's your problem? 
Stay safe. So then we have our next address, the coastal monolith. It's just between Coverside and Grimhaven Bay. But before we leave, remember to go upstairs into the uh, to this office, get the briefcase and another box upstairs with a little bit of loot for us. Ah oh, man, I don't know if I should join in or not. He won't do it. He won't do it. Oh, so apparently he did it then. And as he walks by, oh, man, he got a death. <laughs> he sort of just flops him out the way. Okay then, good to see crime still going strong in this bloody city. But you can see directly what looks like a giant stone penis in all fairness. Um, right in front of you, that is the part of <laughs> the monolith, or so we think it's part of the monolith. Uh, there's a little bit of additional evidence just up here. And then on the base of the giant penis statue, that is where the next clue is for us, actually. Still wet. Someone undressed in a hurry. Don't fall into the water like I do right here. 
And I think I actually ended up dying because you, you sort of got to wiggle it back and forth, <laughs> the, the, the uh, thumbstick. Because I was pressing the white button and nothing was happening. But there's our clue. And next time we'll be going into Mind's Eye. And we'll be going into a guy called Jimmy Price's house. And it's literally dead on in front of you there. Hmm, yes then, so we've got to do yet another dive, another one of those fun, but not at all fun and extremely tedious dives. In fact, we haven't only got this one to do, we've got one to do at the end of the mission as well. So there's two dives to do in this mission. As you can tell, I'm extremely excited about it. That mind's eye was probably a waste of time there, but there's some scaffolding just to the left of the front door for us that we'll need to climb up. Again, no wild beasts in this uh, in the house, but we'll be doing a, again some more key evidence searching, etc. So then, there is Jimmy Price, we'll just have a quick uh, look around for a second, but basically he's going to ask you to do a little something for him, and that is to find his three dead friends. Now, they're basically on the path as you go around the, uh, as you sort of walking through the path anyway, they're on rocks, I do all three dead bodies, but if you don't want to do it, or you just don't bother with it, he'll basically still reward you if you say later on, um, I tried but I couldn't find them. So you still get rewarded either way, but obviously if you do manage to find all three bodies, then he'll reward you well. But he, what he's going to do now is give us the key, get the diving suit, and then we'll be good to go. I'll help you. Now, give me the key. Bless you, mister. Bye.
So this is a another pretty uneventful dive, except, like I said, I find the three bodies, but in between the second and the third body, there is an extra aggressive squid fish in this area. It's one that you can't just run by, you've got to actually harpoon him well, and you've I mean, you've got to be on your toes with this one because he bites you twice, so you could be dead easily within two shots. Apologies. I've got to say uh, sorry because after you get through the second body, basically your exit will then be towards the right-hand side, but the goddamn squid... Squidward... I'm going to start calling him Squidward even though we're at the end. Squidward uh, attacks me from a sort of weird area, so I've got to go completely all the way around while sh uh, harpooning him and then I'm able to get to the exit but from the second body if you go to the right and keep going straight that is where it is but so I'm sorry if it's not clear in the murky underwaterness but again be on your toes with this one because he is slightly extra aggressive so again shoot him and reload straight away So he won't attack you now, which is all good, but again, as you can see, I tried making it as clear as I could. Sadly, though, he was coming at me from all angles. So, uh, obviously, using Mind's Eye, this is where the second monolith piece is, which is all good for us. But yeah, so if you, you know, just keep sort of trying to look around while, as soon as you shoot him, have a have reload, have a quick look around uh, to see where the exit is. It's not too far from the second body, as I said, but it can be a pain in the ass with that fish. That son of a bitch, Squidward. And look at that. Bone dry, back in our snazzy little suit. So again, with Jimmy Price then, if, you, if you've done what you asked, he, he um, rewards you well. If you didn't, make sure you say, I tried but failed, sorry, and he still gives you a couple of bullets, etc. So it's not all lost. But now we've got two out of the three monolith pieces. So we are almost there now. So, the second part of the instructions, the instructions for finding the second monolith talks about disciples of three, each identical to the last. They will be the first young citizens of Oakmont after the water rises. So this is basically uh, talking about triplets who have been born right after the flood. So now we've got to head to the Hospital of St. Mary to see if we can find any birth records matching that particular description in the archives.
Be safe. We don't have any free beds left. <laughs> So then, I won't lie, this could be potentially be quite the sons of bitch for you. Because we've got the address, we're going to mark that down. Sadly for us, it takes place within, within an infested zone. So, yeah, I didn't think that, I didn't think Frogware were going to let us get away with that that easily. So, if you haven't done an infested zone yet, obviously I've mentioned it a few times how it just spawns a bunch of monsters basically and they are quite tough. This one though is, I mean it could could be completely random for you. I'll let you know when we get there. Basically we'll jump into the first bit but you should, you should have no monsters that spawn and attack you. You should have no monsters and we'll get the key evidence um, from that area. I don't get all the additional evidence because it's the next area that we've got to jump where the, the monsters spawn and phew, I, may, I just haven't got time for that. I haven't got time for that. So this area, again, I'm, I'm being very careful because I'm expecting some monsters to appear. But this is just an area for looking at the monoliths, looking at the key evidence. Like a piece of the monolith. Shipping off such a huge piece would require a lot of effort. You couldn't do this alone. Even this monstrosity couldn't survive being riddled with harpoons. on the monolith. The monster took a good bite out of this poor man. His own mother wouldn't recognize him now. While he smell us, protect the stone! Hurry! something harder you must have this piece of the stone it's blessed time to figure this out harder you must have this piece of the stone it's blessed hurry I think I've heard something the wild beasts smell us protect the stone a group of fanatics chipped off a piece of the monolith and got away with it. Apparently it was the one with the niche I need. Yeah, sadly there is one bit, uh, one more piece of key evidence that we need and it's just over this fence and this is where a random amount of enemies could spawn for you. So I'm doing the, you know when you're about to jump off like a right really high place and you're sort of like scared to do it, you go to and then you sort of jump back, that's exactly what I'm doing here. For me, only one Archeronian spawns, but what you've got to do, this key evidence, you've got to inspect the front and the back. I uh, backed out of it because I crapped my pants and just jumped over. I ended up killing this Archeronian. So, for me, lucky it, luckily it was just a big buffet boy that spawned, but again, it could be just any, any number of enemies for you. So you've got to be careful. Well, Firk a Dirk. I didn't actually think he'd be able to um, start climbing over there, so I slightly shit myself again. But, yeah, so for me, luckily, he's dead. So this key evidence, inspect the front, inspect the back, and then 
thankfully we can get the hell out of here now and then we've only got one more set of enemies to do which is in the next place which is in the saint michael's church or the place after the next place you will you'll see in a minute So then it turns out that the people who took that piece of monolith containing the cave finger that we need have set up HQ nearby so they didn't have to travel far between the monolith and their headquarters which is well, it's pretty good for them, even better for us. So we are now going to the stone worshippers residence but that particular street is flooded so we'll have to be taking a boat. Now I go the complete long, uh, complete wrong way round like a mong. Um, you can't just go straight there. Basically, you have to take the long way around to get to it. So, you know, be aware of that. I end up, I, I think we can go straight there. But you've got to take a long way around. But for the next area, again, there's no wild beasts or anything. This is just another key evidence searching. Finally bloody made it then. So, like I said, it's just a nice bit of chilled area. Uh, when we get out after this area, we go back to St. Michael's Church, where we found the first monolith. There's a couple of wild beasts to get through tonight. Again, it's a big buffet boy for me that comes down the steps. Could be any random bits of number for you. And then we've got to do one more dive, and that is the point of no return. But enjoy yourself for the next couple of minutes. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I'd gotten all the evidence. Turns out that I missed this rock on a plate. Now, these worshippers chewed this and that, ah, that hurts my teeth. That hurts my teeth talking about it. Just, ah. Oh, there's a white the ascension. I'll lock you up so no one can interrupt. Let me, we are honored to be the first to ascend. May this case get a frick put it here. At last our ascendance is so close. We'll start immediately. Okay, let's see what we have here. Put it here. 
At last our ascendance is so close. We'll start. We are honored to be the first to ascend. May this case give free us from our bodily weakness. Others await the ascension. I'll lock you up so no one can interrupt. Let me take the key. The piece of the monolith was brought here, partly eaten, and the leftovers were taken upstairs. The door was locked and the key hidden among the books. Must be part of the seal. I tell you what, if there's something that video games do well, it's always to do with these creepy, like stone mannequin, creepy ass creepers. The one thing that I hate in games, and if anybody played Condemned and the second Condemned game, uh, which was on the 360, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about with creepy ass mannequins. Blah, blah. Anyway, get some uh, Mind Palace deductions done now, and then we can head back to the middle of Advent into St. Michael's Church, and basically coming up towards the end of the game now. Brilliant. So yeah, once again, get your gun ready uh, and your grenades, whatever, heal yourself up lovely. We won't be needing this ammo at all, so go nuts this time. We'll have a couple of enemies, not a difficult fight, and then we can head straight down to the sub-basement ready for dive number, the last one of the game.
Yep, I felt a mega sense of relief when I managed to kill every monster in the game. That was just delicious, that was lovely. So we're using Mind's Eye on the Monolith, and now we are down. Now we are coming to the end. So for this dive, again, it is not that eventful again. What we'll be doing, uh, you know, it's nothing they haven't seen before, really. Um, we can jump down an unlimited distance without taking damage, which is good. Um, so as long as you see the ground below you, it's safe to jump down. We'll be following torches with green fires in this one. So it's the same sort of trying to get through the hot air vents. There is another Squidward that will attack us, but this time we can just slam straight through. Tentacle monster there as well, but they sort of just look at you weird. So yeah, with the squid fish, you can literally just walk on by this time with no issues. A lot easier than the last one. So this is the area with squid, but, but what you can do is just walk straight forward, climb the rocks, you will get hit maybe once, maybe twice, but you should be absolutely fine. Just keep walking forward, screw this guy, Sugma. Now then, we are coming up close to the very end of the game now. We've been transported onto a ship, and what we can, uh, what's going to happen now is we're going to get off the ship, we're going to do a lot of Mind Palace deductions, but again, it's obviously all your actions towards which um, thing you put your seal on at the end of the game, which really matter, so, so you don't even have to do this, in all fairness. But what you're going to do now is keep walking for a couple of minutes um, with hallucinations they're gonna drain your sanity quickly but what i do is just keep taking my antipsychotics if you don't have any antipsychotics obviously just when you get past the next hallucination phase stop still for a minute until your sanity uh, reappears that's if you want to do that but i had enough antipsychotics to keep slamming down me so but that's what we'll be doing for the next couple of minutes just walk off the edge here and it's hallucination time Shame you'll die here, Reed. This city has far worse. Yeah, a lot of people want to leave Oakmont, kid. Few ever succeed. I want none of this to be real. To wake up in my bed in Boston, eat real food, drink good coffee, and forget it all. Let me be frank. You ain't welcome. You slip up. Don't cross a T. Or don't. Please help me die. I can't. I... I just can't. No mercy, boys. He's been asking for this.
There is nothing more vile than futility. Watching this happen again and again and doing nothing. We are the agents of change, Mr. Please hurry, Reed. We can still save this city. You can't end the suffering. The cycle will go on. Forgive me, Father. For I who sit. <laughs> We're doomed to rot in this boy. There is a cycle. This has all happened before. She wants to be free, but she must not be, or else it all ends. Destiny waits for no man, Charles. Decide now whether this ends in salvation or blood. So this is the very, very end cavern then. So very important again, make a manual save here so we can get all three endings. So basically what you're going to see now is when you continue forward and go down, you'll be, um, obviously you're transported in this large cavern. When you go down, you'll see a pedestal with a retrocognition tear next to it. Once you step into the tear, there's three to do. There's one on the very right side of the cavern, one on the very left, and this one in the middle here. So I'll just show you very quickly because they are quite uh, far apart. But when you step into the retrocognition tier, there are two options to choose. And it, the first one is always the one next to the pedestal and the other one is just in front. Witnessing that retrocognition gives you an idea of what will happen if you place the seal on the pedestal. So again, three pedestals, three retrocognition tiers. The one on the very left, basically... Reed will sacrifice himself. That will restart the cycle. Mankind is safe for a few hundred years, but Reed will be killed. And this whole thing will start over again and repeat. And to be honest, I cannot stand, I cannot stand endings where you go through all that in the entire game and it's a case of, well, I've got to sacrifice myself. If you get killed, like, say, John Marston at the end of Red Dead 2, that's fine. Well, not fine, that still upsets me to this day. But when it's to do a sacrifice, man, that does piss me off. So we've seen a retrocognition tier. This is the first ending we're going for. Um, the take... cycle restart. Let the cycle restart. Uh, so it takes me a while to figure it out for some reason. I have made my choice. But yeah, first one is always Let by the pedestal. Restart. Second one's always just in front. Put your seal on this one then. And that is the achievement unlocked. As soon as the achievement unlocks, uh, you can just load up the manual save straight away instead of going through all the credits like I stupidly did. Lol, somehow Johannes Vandenberg is still alive even though we clearly shot him in the head at the Devil's Reef Hotel. But anyway, there we go. So next we'll be going... <sighs> You've got to listen to this dick again. Um, Ebeno Blackwood. But basically we're going for the middle uh, tier next. And what this does... Um, he will release the daughter, presumably, very, very presumably, ending mankind. And Reed sort of suspects that he'll be transformed into something inhumane, and mankind is doomed anyway. So, 
Yay, that's happy. Hmm? I accept my fate. Unlike the cowards who came before me. My hidden daughter. I am coming. Yum, yum, yum. More dark and depressing. But this is, to be honest, this is the ending that I would have particularly chosen myself. So, we're going for the right side now. And basically, what Charles does is says, I've been through all that. You lot, I'm sorry, you can go fudge yourself. The fish faces, the ape faces, the humans. Go Ligma and Sugma. I'm out of here. So, Charles leaves Boston. And uh, Oakmont, sorry, goes back to Boston. Goes back home. Leaves Oakmont to its fate. To be honest, it's probably the one that I would have chose. Not because I'm an asshole or anything, but, you know, the other two are not exactly, um, come grab me endings, are they? I'm leaving this damn city and its madness behind. I will not choose. I'll break the cycle and free all of us trapped in Oakmont. I will not choose. Enough is enough. I'm leaving this damn city and its madness behind. So there we have it then guys and gals, that should now be your 1000 out of 1000 or platinum all done. Now I really really did enjoy playing this, it was a great game and to be honest a big step up from Call of Cthulhu in my opinion. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the journey too, not only through the game but hopefully we had a good laugh together with my uh, trying to be funny by talking nonsense commentary. <laughs> um, I mean, it always gives me pleasure when you guys say you had fun listening to me as well as playing the game. So thank you all for your kind words up until this point. Now, as I said, hopefully this game and this guide have helped you. Please give this video a like and a comment if it did. Subscribe to me for a lot more like this to come. And why not consider supporting the channel on Patreon? 
The links will be provided in the description below, but you could be in with a chance of winning some epic prizes if you do end up following me on Patreon. So I hope to see you there. But that's that again. Thanks so much for watching, guys and gals, and I will see you in the next one. Big love.